Hi everybody, Grandma Bev here. The purpose of this little excerpt that's gonna go at the beginning of all these videos dealing with my cancer journey is to act as a disclaimer, disclaimer or a CYA. Anything that I talk about in these videos are dealing with my own personal experience. Uh, I'm not recommending that anybody follow what I'm going through. You, you need to see your own doctor and, and uh, get a plan of action. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not going by what anybody else says, just what my own doctors say. And uh, anything else is also my opinion. So please uh, enjoy my journey. <laughs> Hi, Grandma Bev here from Life with Grandma Bev, and welcome back to my channel. Well, I hope you all saw the disclaimer at the beginning of the video. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to say with you respect to that. Just say, you know, I'm, I'm me, you're you, and we're all different. You know, I have all different needs. Anyway, first off, before we get started, I wanted to... Uh, share with you this card I got. I just got the mail before we came in and here's a card from, from Kim, from hanging out with Kim. And you gotta subscribe to her. She is the neatest gal. I just love her and her mom. <laughs> and you can always count on Kim to send you a card. She's always thinking nice things about people. So it says, you are fierce. And of course she made her, her signature rose in there and a couple of butterflies. It says, Bev. So you are fierce and you can do this. Yeah, very easily. <laughs> Sending you tons of healing prayers and hugs. Love, Kim. It's so sweet. Can you guys see it back there? I don't know. Okay, and then she also included a whole bunch of this would be a good bookmark. <laughs> a whole bunch of different you know, butter, butterfly stickers, main, mostly butterfly, and some some flower uh, flower ones, bunch of little butterflies. So thank you. So, oh, and here's some dragonflies. So thank you so much, Cam. I'm gonna keep this to use for my bookmark for the book that I never <laughs> finished reading. Put those there. Okay. Well. I know that some of you have been anxiously waiting to hear the results of my visit today. I've got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> I've got to say, I'm, we're both, Bob and I, very impressed with the, their setup they've got there. And, uh, oops. I mean, we were, we were there like five and a half hours. And we had a little bit of a break, an hour in between. Uh, some of the appointments, but uh, we were in town there f five and a half hours before we headed home. And so they have all these different people that come in to meet you. And the first gal was very informative. I mean, she really, I'm, I'm having everything fall apart. What's the matter, girlfriend? So, see, this one is just my my schedule, my schedule, <laughs> okay. Now remember, this pertains to my situation. Now at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give a very important message to all of you, so stay tuned for that, okay? <laughs> so first she went over the anatomy of a breast, I say boob. And how you know, we have all these little the ducks and all that kind of stuff. And these are like the, the uh, lo lobo lobules, lobules, and how it all starts forming in there. It comes out of here, and then there's where it starts growing. Then, oh, she talks cancer evolution. <laughs> I won't go over everything, but how it starts. And um, mine in particular starts... It's a um, hormone re related. It's a estrogen receptor positive and or progesterone receptor positive breast cancer. 
And it talks about how, you know, you're born with, all, with a lot of these things and sometimes they don't progress. But all of our cells is, were uh, mutating. A lot of times it'd be like a little burp, a little hip, hick, hip, hiccup, or like a misspelled or something is how you can describe it. But it gradually works all around to where you see your DNA and ends up being a cancer. Uh, and she had these... I thought these were interesting. There's the, there's the normal one, and then the hyperplasia, or, or the, the carcinoma in, in situ. That's what I have is the carcinoma in situ where it's basically all inside the one thing, but it's also invasive to where it could spread out. Let's see what I mean. Where it's in yellow, that's what I have. And mine is referred to as ductal, ductal carcinoma. Then they have these different grades. And I already knew about these grades before I went because Bob looked them up when he got the results of my test. And they got different grades, like the, tu the tumor grade. And it can be one to three grades. And then they add up all your grades on these things. And can, that can determine how bad your cancer is. Well, mine was... Uh, for tumor grade, it's grade one. That's the cheapest, cheapest, leastest. <laughs> the tumor proliferation rate is very low, less than 10%. So it's accessed by measuring the proportion of cells expressing the KI-67 protein, which is produced during the cell cycle. And then the drivers of the growth. My, my driver, of course, like I said, was the, the estrogen. It could be HER2 amplified or triple negative. There's a picture. That's me. <laughs> so mine is sitting right about here. See that dot? So from a side view, it would be right about there, which is very good because it's way inside which means it hasn't doesn't have as much of a chance of spreading out like into the skin or into the lymph nodes or any of that kind of stuff. And it's like what they call like at, at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, if this was a clock, it'd be 12 going around. And mine is 1.1 1. 1 centimeter or equal to an inch. An inch and a then they've got the state, the different stages. You know, when you hear people have, you know, breast cancer stage four, three, two, one. Mine it ended up being stage one. <laughs> so stage one A, the tumor equals two centimeters and no lymph nodes. So that's mine. Stage one, stage one A, where I no lymph nodes. Okay, then we got to, the, she explained what the surgery involves. First off, of course, I will have a lumpectomy, which is removing that crazy little kid that's in there. And normally, well, what they used to do, like with my mom, they go up into your lymph nodes and stuff. Well, now they can do what they, uh, they take a little specimen and they check it. If, it, if it's got a certain amount of whatever, you may have to go back in to have a, a, uh, your lymph nodes removed, but m more than likely mine will not be that way. So uh, they remove a good size area to get even the areas around it. Now, of course, the tumor is like ball shape, but it's got all these little vein type things that can go out trying to get elsewhere. So I should try to get more of those. And uh, I opted not to have the sentinel lymph node biopsy. That's where they put some dye in. The biopsy comes back and tells you whether you got, you know, problems with your lymph nodes, which it's highly unlikely with my stage. So, uh, well, here's what I was talking about. Now, this is not me, <laughs> but that's about like what mine looks like. It's about that big. But the lump itself, see, has all those little spidery looking things on it. <laughs> then I have the option of having radiation. And that's where you lay on the thing. And uh, it's not like you're going into a tube like for an MRI. And it takes about 60 seconds to zap it. And uh, if I had a nodes problem, it, 
It'd be longer than 60, <laughs> 60 seconds of going up into there, which I don't have. So the whole scheme of it was, this is her, <laughs> this is the game plan. I will be having surgery to remove the lymph node. And I'll take the little teeny little bit of, of it, uh, of the, um, no, they won't. That's part of the, yeah, I'll have the lump activate. Lump activate. Uh, so I'm not a candidate, like, see here, they got go one or two ways, a mastectomy or the lump thing. Now, we decided that, you know, I'm not going to have the therapy on for the nodes or, you know, the lymph nodes. But they'll be doing a little one afterwards, a little test that's going to check to make sure. But it's no point in doing it all right now if we don't have to, okay? Then, let's see. She talked to me about radiation. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the radiation will be pretty much this whole, the whole boob, actually. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> The whole boob would be radiated <laughs> just to make sure they got all the stuff, which more than likely she's got most of it. But they were doing a an, an oncotype testing of the tumor to determine if I need something like a chemotherapy, which I don't need it. I, I don't need chemo, but I also have the option of not having radiology or, or you know, so, uh, and the reason why I decided not to is because, you know, you get really, it can get itchy and peeling on the boob after this, and no, no, but, but my risk is so low for it ever coming back that it might be 10 years or more before I even have another, you know. <laughs> so it's like, well, why go through that? I don't, I don't need that. That's unnecessary. And, uh, you know, she agreed with my opinion because I feel like I regularly have a mammogram and now I have the MRI. And see, the MRI is what spotted this little kid. Because I had one years back, but it was just from the mam mammogram, a little uh, tumor on that one. And they just did a biopsy and, and it wasn't car carcinogenic. Okay, then we'll have a long-term surveillance, <laughs> which will be from that point, from year, years one and two, I'll have an exam and stuff every one to th every three months, and years three to five every six months, years five plus every six to 12 months, and mammograms at six months and yearly, you know, with the MRI. If I were to come break out with more cancer in between then and there, the odds are I would be well into my 80s. So it just didn't make sense to do radiology if I didn't need to. Um, so that's basically what it was. So I'm going to put it in the words are less. I'm going to have surgery. I've got to wait now for that. They'll call me next week to set up a time to uh, have surgery. I met the surgeon. She is the cutest little thing and funny. So <laughs> that's my kind of doctor. So uh, first I'll be going in and they insert something. Oh, something. Okay. They described it like a, uh, a stud finder. <laughs> and this little thing goes in. And then when she goes in a few days later for surgery, it'll pinpoint exactly where and what she needs to remove. <laughs> I thought that was cute. So I'll be having that. I will not be having chemo. I will not be having radiation. I'm not going to lose my hair. I'm not going to lose weight. <laughs> I'm going to have to do that the hard way, <laughs> which I'm not very successful at. So that's the, uh, <clears throat> the gist of it. Very nice put together thing. Let's see, I had, uh, um, first it was the 
uh, cancer cancer nurse comes in and go, goes thoroughly over your history, everything that you know, I can think of. And then from there it was a, a, a doctor named Tony Roberts, and she'll be with me most of the way <coughs> to where when uh, after I had surgery, I'll be when I come back from my checkups every six months or whatever after surgery, I'll be seeing her. And then here's a surgeon. And this gal I didn't have to see because I'm not having radiation. But then they also had a social worker come in. I wasn't expecting that. <coughs> I see if you, uh, you know, were having any issues or stresses. And no, I'm not really. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I've done everything I can to prevent it. And, uh, the only things that bother me are things that don't pertain to that, you know, and, and it's been a few years now for the main thing that I went through that was pretty hard on me. And uh, she still gave me all kinds of stuff, you know, for for uh, uh, support groups and all that. I really don't feel like I need one. In fact, I'm feeling kind of guilty because it's so simple and so little and caught so fast they kept stressing to me, you are so lucky they caught this real fast. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I know, well, I know, I know. <laughs> but that's my message I want to leave you. Make sure you get your mammograms and even uh, an MRI if your doctor suggests. Now, of course, they say this is through your doctor, not based on me. But you can use me for an example. <laughs> you know, my mother had breast cancer and she immediately had both her breasts removed and that was like about 20 years ago or so and then she had developed lymphedema or whatever in her arm or she had to wear a sleeve thing on her arm and you know it just isn't a death sentence like it used to be if you catch it early and i mean really early <coughs> So uh, I think that's all I need to tell you because I don't know yet when I'm having the surgery, but it looks like we're going to be able to go to Yuma on schedule, providing I can get the surgery before the 23rd of September. <laughs> because in three weeks after surgery, I see this other guy, you know, the one gal that I'm going to be seeing uh, for many years to come now. <laughs> so that was a relief. I was kind of hoping I'd lose weight, but what can you say? So, you know, I was raised Catholic, so of course I was raised to be feel guilty. And I hear I'm really good at giving out guilt. So I'm going to give you a big guilt trip. Get your mammograms. I know there's some people say, oh, but the radiation stuff and all that. Okay, either have it now or you'll have it down the line. <laughs> When you, if you develop breast cancer and you may have to go through chemo too, which is really sick, that kills everything inside of you instead of just, uh, you know. Oh, and there's also a medication that I'll be on too afterwards. A, uh, some kind of a hormone that's going to, like my eye on flesh has come back. I don't want that. That's the negative part. Okay, so anyway. Please comment below, share, like, and subscribe because there will be further episodes. You know, as I get to the, the surgery, I come on, tell you how that went. And, oh, that's always something. <laughs> so that'll do it for today. I hope you're all having a good, good beginning of the week. Mine went a lot better than I was expecting. So I'm happy. Like I say, I can't stress it enough. Get your mammograms. Now get MRIs because that's how they found mine. And I was getting mammograms every year faithfully because of my mother having breast cancer. So, yeah, you know, talk to your doctors. See what they suggest is best for you. I love you all. Bye.